Arsenal 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0. And guess what? This is the kickstart that Arsenal would have gone ahead to want to have and really get into the mix. At the time, they've gone ahead to obviously find themselves in a position of really putting in a shift with uh, Mikel Ateta naming a strong 11 that went ahead to obviously annihilate the side of Wolverhampton Wanderers. Though I believe the first half was all about Arsenal and the second half was all about Wolverhampton Wanderers. And that's what we call it has been a game of two halves because in the first half, Arsenal had everything in their control. But in the first half, sorry, in the second half, everything was out of Arsenal hands. And uh, all what they needed was that Bukayo Saka goal to come in through and give them a comfortable lead. Because Wolves were like, we can go for this, we can go for this. And Bukayo Saka came in through and really scored that goal. Welcome to this channel. It's the Rokani Media Football. And we're here to do the first match preview of March 1 out of the 38 Premier League games that Arsenal are set to play this season. And remember, we are powered by Mono Gadgets. Mono Gadgets are dealers in phones, laptops, brand new. Even if you want used phones and use laptops from UK, they have them. So call them on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five and also go ahead to obviously uh, follow them on TikTok. Search for Muno Gadgets and see the wide range of products that these two are really having that side. That is Muno Gadgets for you and they're really doing the due diligence to bring you the best of the best of this video in this match reaction. 300 likes to be smashed on this video as Arsenal celebrate their first win of the week and um it came in through with a clean sheet first and foremost remember last season Arsenal kept the most clean sheets during that season of 2023-2024 right with 16 i think the 15 16 clean sheets from david raya and this time round Arsenal have gone ahead to start off a season with a clean sheet last season they commenced the season with conceding one goal and it ended 2-1 in favor of Arsenal when they beat Nottingham Forest by two goals to one. This time round, they've gone ahead to say it's high time. We kept a clean sheet and no one is really going to come and really stop us from really doing what we are supposed to be doing as the club of Arsenal into the mix. So that is Arsenal for you. And um, why is keeping the clean sheet very important? You know, if you go into a season like this when you are favorites because I've not gonna hit obviously coming through and really put in the best um the best uh i've not gonna hit obviously tell you my predictions of this season i think i'm gonna record that video tomorrow morning and put it there but i i want to let you know that <clears throat> i'm giving arsenal a very huge goal to win this um to win this um to win this premier league they're the favorites and if at all you are the favorites you have to do things differently you know you have to continue one maintaining the good things that you did last season and secondly you have to obviously make the you have to obviously come up and really make lots of things happen into the mix at arsenal the things that you did badly are supposed to obviously be turned out into very 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 good efforts into the mix so that is what arsenal had to do and with a clean sheet kept today it's really great because the most surprising bit of Arsenal for the previous two seasons has been at Emirates, they've gone ahead to keep very few clean sheets. Most of the clean sheets that Arsenal have gone ahead to keep, they've kept them away from home. Meaning that, why should that happen? You know, meaning that at home, they should find means of really keeping more clean sheets. As I told you that, if they kept a clean sheet against Tottenham Hotspur and Fulham, Arsenal would have gone ahead to be the champions of the, of the previous season. 2023 2024 but because they failed to keep that clean sheet then everything was known into the best way possible so this time round they've gone ahead to keep a clean sheet with them that is a very huge goal and the other positive is saka and kai havertz starting the season on a high you know i've always told people that uh the problem of arsenal is not scoring goals the problem of arsenal is creating those chances for your number nine to obviously score and you saw today kai havertz got his first chance in the first half and really buried it in the net after saka missing martinelli and very many others you get but when this guy got his chance and for me it was known a very like an obvious chance because by the time he headed that ball he was among very many people you know he was surrounded by very many people 
into that box but he found himself really scoring that goal and he headed in the back of the net that is Kai Havertz for you and it was in the 25th minute when Saka put in that cross and this man did justice to it and that was Kai Havertz for you meaning that he has gone ahead to start a season on a high and if at all he scored uh, like 13 goals and most of them he scored in the second half of the season that means this time round he, he's really gonna find himself in a proper position of really putting in the required shift altogether as a player. I told you, this guy can score 20 goals. And you will obviously agree with me that even Gabriel Jesus can. But the problem with Gabriel Jesus is he is never fit. You know, he cannot play close to 30 or 38 games. But for Kai Havertz, he has been available. He was available for Arsenal for the entire season. And even this time round, you anticipate that he's really going to be available for all of that season, I tell you. And if he's starting to score like this, you know, then I tell you, he's really going to get Arsenal the 20 goals that you've always going to hit to yearn for. And he's really going to prove people wrong. I told you last season that Jesus was to score 20 goals, even the first season. But the problem is he is injury prone, you know. He's not available. Every time he really went into full pelt, he found himself getting a setback of an injury. And when you get injured, there is the way you are really affected, you know. And when you're affected, it really goes ahead. It obviously put you off always, you know. So that is it coming in through from Kai Havertz. In there for, sorry, from Kai from uh, Kai Havertz. And this is how he went ahead to score that header in the 25th minute. Bokayo Saka putting in a very beautiful, a very beautiful across in there for you and uh the way saka really dribbled and he was given a lot of time to obviously concentrate and obviously find out a pass for kai havertz and kai havertz buried the ball into the back of the net to obviously make it one for the club of arsenal you know if you really know what this guy is all about i'm talking about um kai havertz he's a goal machine he is a goal machine he has proven to be one and i think no one is really gonna stop him from obviously getting the people the goals they really want into the mix so after that arsenal went ahead to obviously struggle a little bit to obviously look in for a second goal and they couldn't obviously find one but guess what happened it was saka into the 80 sorry in the 74th minute when he obviously got a ball from um when he got a ball from um from Kai Havertz and went ahead obviously bury that ball into the back of the net and I tell you this is what I've always gone ahead to say about Bukayo Saka and you guys were like Rokani you have an agenda on Bukayo Saka and I've always told you that I don't have any agenda on Bukayo Saka but if you are being if you are being referred to as one of the best right wingers in the world these are things you're supposed to be doing and today I give Saka his flowers because he was all over the place I remember when Arsenal was playing Leverkusen, I told you, when Saka came on and played 45 minutes, he looked like he was this kind of player that has been playing uh, for the previous uh, one month, you know, and he looked sharp. And he came also when they're playing against Leon, and Saka looked sharp. And this time round, he has gone ahead to show us that he's ready for the season. One assist and one goal. And that shows you that he's starting the season on a high. And the same thing has gone ahead to happen to Kai Havertz. He has come in through and obviously scored one goal and he has gone ahead to put in one assist as a player. So that is what we are getting in through from the man himself known as Kai Havertz right now, currently and by Kai Saka. They've gone ahead to obviously open up their accounts of the season and nothing is going to stop them from really scoring very many goals because their next fixtures, I think, are really very, very, very giving. And I know... Arsenal will obviously see themselves really score many, many goals because after playing against a team called Wolverhampton Wanderers, they're going to be playing against Aston Villa away from home. That's really going to be a little bit tricky and it will call in for this manager to obviously put in a very good shift. But I think when you look at how Pate played alongside Declan Rice today, it has been really important onto them doing the needful. With them are playing Brighton last on the 31st before we go into the international break. That will see Arsenal return to play into the North London Derby against Tottenham Hotspur. So, I believe they're really having a very good fixture and it's good to face these teams early enough. And if at all you lose points, you know, it's very easy for you to catch up. But the moment you lose points, like in the towards the end of the first half of the season, then 
the other teams will obviously capitalize and really gain momentum to put in a very good required shift. So, Arsenal, all what they needed, I told you, were three points. After getting three points, to look in for really topping the table. Though right now, they are not on top of the table. But the players at Arsenal really looked good. But I believe that there is no game that starts easy. And I told you, if at all you are really watching my preseason games, that Arsenal is going to start on a high. And my word was, Mikel Arteta knows his starting eleven that is going to be fielded when they're playing against Paul Vampton Wanderers. And he really brought the same eleven I talked about because that team has been here and it's really fluid. The cohesion has going to hit, obviously build up very well. That's why you see the fluidity in the front three and the midfield is really building up very, very well. And the other man I want to talk about is Julian Timber. He came on and really play. He was played as a right winger, sorry, as a right as a right back, and you saw what he offers defensively and what he offers when he's really playing, um, when he's really playing um, defensively and offensively, you know? That's why I tell you that the best right the best right back at Arsenal is Julian Timber. You get and the moment they give him to the, the moment they really give him to play right back, Benjamin White will obviously find himself in a position of really being isolated in sometimes because Julian Timber is giving, you know, his end product to his game is really better than that of Benjamin White. Did you see that skill set? He really put up and skipped past two defenders towards the byline, though he lost he lost it and it was really um, as he put in a cross, it deflected off a defender, it ricocheted back to uh, Julian Timber, and it was a goal kick. But you see how he can easily skip past players and get into the final third to create moments of magic. I just can't wait to see more minutes of this guy being played as a right back. And I think Ateta might be thinking about it, and a lot is really going to be happening into the mix. There were chances created by all Vampton Wanderers, but Arsenal had the lion's share of everything positive into that game, as you see it well here, into what we call the stats of the game. 18 shots by Arsenal. All Vampton Wanderers had 9 shots. 6 shots on target by Arsenal. Then all Vampton Wanderers had 3 shots. 53% ball possession by Arsenal, 47% ball possession by Wolverhampton Wanderers, 419 passes completed by Arsenal, Wolverhampton Wanderers completed 373 passes, 85% passing accuracy by Arsenal, 81% passing accuracy by Wolverhampton Wanderers, then 17 fouls committed by Arsenal, 14, sorry, 17 fouls committed by Arsenal, then Wolverhampton Wanderers committed 14, two yellow cards issued to the side of Arsenal, and even Wolverhampton Wanderers went into the referee's book twice. Then, zero red cards issued, zero offsides to Arsenal, one offside to Wolverhampton Wanderers, eight corners to Arsenal, and two corners to the side of Wolverhampton Wanderers. And this time round, they haven't gone ahead to use a set piece to score a goal, but they really had them, and they are not all that threatening, right? But after all that happening, it is really one of those moments that you have to really understand that uh, the table is really out. You understand? The table is really out. And guess who is now on top? It's Brighton winning 3 nil. you know. Then Arsenal won by 2 goals to nil. Liverpool won by 2 goals to nil. Manchester United won by 1 goal to nil. Newcastle won by 1 goal to nil. Bournemouth have gone hit a draw with Nottingham 1-1. One, one. You understand? So that is how the table is really looking. And as we speak right now, Aston Villa... Is going to be playing against West Ham. <clears throat> you know, we can't, we, we can't wait to see what the result is really going to be. But there are players that I believe should obviously rise their game. I know Mikel Adita loves um, Martinelli very well, but I didn't think that Martinelli had done enough to play all those minutes. I believe at the hour mark, Martinelli was supposed to be taken off to bring on a different kind of player on as Leandro Trossard. You know, I think he would have gone to bring on Trossard to do the needful and when he brought on Trossard he took off Saka I was like why do you keep Martino in the field of play take him off he get and um, that's why I think that um, uh, that's where sometimes this guy gets it wrong that is Mikel Ateta because Trossard is a better player at Arsenal than Martinelli look at his stats two seasons compare those two players you'll thank me later you get and Martinelli has been at Arsenal since he was 19 this is I think his fifth season when he's playing at Arsenal and Trossard, this is his second full season when he's playing for the club of Arsenal. So, I think that has to be rectified by the manager. You know, 
Trossard has to be getting in more and more and more minutes because he offers something different. Very composed. His skill set is really great. He creates moments of magic, you know, line-breaking passes. He can score your goal. He can get you an assist, you know. He's a different kind of player altogether. You know, Martinelli is really too direct, you know. I saw him in the second half. Um, I think he created some two cool chances, you know. One to Odega that he missed out. And um, I think there is another one in the first half that went ahead, obviously. be really def it deflected off the body of a defender to go into a corner. But... If it's Trossard, I think he can do better because of his composure and having the best technique to operate in uh, in tight spaces, right? In those small pockets of space where Martinelli really struggles a lot. And um, Jorginho, I think, was not used, you know. Um, Julian Timber came on, Jesus came on, Trossard came on. I think that was all into this game of football. And... In a game like this, all you need is to really get that win. To obviously, start it off on momentum because you know to eat that. Man City is playing Chelsea, and over March, Chelsea is going to have to be looking as a joke into the preseason. Don't think that they are going to come in here and Man City is really going to find it as a walk in the park. I tell you, it's not going to be a walk in the park as most of you are really thinking. It's going to be a hard game for Man City, and you never know Man City can drop points today, and Arsenal can capitalize on that. And all right, they're going to have to drop two. Now I have two ahead of them. So let me continue to capitalize and put in the shift altogether. But I loved Martin Odegaard display. I loved Declan Rice. Um, Zinchenko really looked solid. And he was not that avenue that I anticipated is going to be into the mix. But obviously the man that would have went to trouble him was really out. That is Pedro Neto. He crossed from World of Wonders and went to play for Chelsea. The centre-back pairing, Saliba. And Gabriel Magales, they are really exquisite and they put in the required shift altogether, and that's why they deserve their flowers. So, guys, that's what I really saw in that game. You know, so continue to obviously uh, do the needful as you subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Arsenal has gone ahead to win this beautiful game of football. And let me see whether we have some stats that Arsenal is going ahead to say it this time round because. They are really on it, and Saka is in the mood. Havertz has been in the mood, and hope you know what they're really doing in there for you. So, Arsenal had the cutting edge, and Wolverhampton Wanderers went ahead, obviously, lack the cutting edge. And there are some flashes of brilliancy in the game of Arsenal, but it really looked known as the best or the vintage Arsenal that you can obviously come up and obviously talk about in here. So, what else haven't I talked about? I want to see what your reactions are into the comment section below about Arsenal, about Arsenal 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0. Arsenal are really jogging and they are waiting to see how Man City is really going to be featuring against Chelsea, that is, tomorrow. So, may the living to God bless you abundantly, the Muslims may Allah bless you abundantly and see you in my next video where i'm going to be coming up to bring you the player ratings and to name who my man of the match was but saka exquisite performance and for kai havertz he was really sublime onto the night remember we are powered by mono gadgets they are dealers in phones laptops brand new ones moreover and if i told you want used phones and used laptops from the uk call them on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five call them or whatsapp them and go on to uh tiktok follow them up they will obviously give you what you want that is mono gadgets and continue to subscribe because we want to hit thirty thousand subscribers guys let's hit that milestone and let's celebrate that very very soon and Congratulations to Arsenal for winning their first game and I believe this season might turn out to be the most competitive season ever in the history of the Premier League because Liverpool has won, Arsenal has won, Manchester United has won, Chelsea and Man City are playing tomorrow, Spurs is playing on Monday, Newcastle has won, you get Aston Villa is playing now. So what else should we talk about? But the substitutes were really great. You know, though I believe that he would have gone ahead obviously make them earlier, you know, uh, Trossard would have gone here to come in earlier, like in the 60th minute, get him on. Um, I believe Benjamin White played very many minutes. They would have gone to take him early enough, you know. And um, I 
think that's it. That's all. Maybe next time he'll make it a point that he really makes those um, substitutions early. That is it. And um, I'm excited for the season, you know. Bye-bye. See you later.